All right. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Deborah Leanne. You're in a thank God we have the light and dark going on here because you know it's all about the <laughs> ring of life and death. And I mean, eclipse energy is still with us. So um let's talk about this is a juicy, they're all juicy, but this one feels I don't know, difficult for me to comprehend or to even want to understand. Maybe I don't even want to understand it. Maybe that's what it is. Okay. Well, let's Stop dive in. in. Uh, this is Jinky 42. And um, this is the Jinky of letting go of living and dying. It's in the code on ring of living uh, life, the ring of life and death. And there are three states of consciousness within this key as all the other keys. And this is written by Richard Rudd and it's called the gene keys and the shadow, the human state of this key is expectation. And the gift out of expectation is detachment. And the acidic state is celebration. Yay. And then maybe that's why you don't want to celebrate. <laughs> well, um, I'm not, I'm getting better at not celebrating just because the world tells me I'm supposed to celebrate. Like I used to think, oh, it's a holiday. I have to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I'm honoring that there are days where can I celebrate being like this? Maybe that's exactly. what I'm, that's what I'm surrendering into mm -hmm. the heaviness yeah. Is, is there a way to celebrate that at the same time of feeling uncelebratory? But anyway, let's let's dive in because this human fear or natural tendency is where we, something we all understand. I mean, the whole thing about expectation. Oh man, we get ourselves in a big bundle of craziness with expectation. And we, we get drilled into us from when we're young, you know, that you're, you're expected to be like this, that this behavior is expected, that school expects this, that your pe peers expect this, your parents. Your, right. so, and so we have all these expectations placed upon us that then even if we, even after we outgrow all of that, we still have our own inner expectations right. and we don't even realize how much they run us. Ooh, it's, it's pretty massive. I mean, that's the, um, I was thinking about this as he, I was listening to the 64 ways this morning and, um, I cracked up because I felt like waiting for that, that book that I read when I was in my twenties, it was about waiting for Godot, you know, <laughs> like you're waiting for your future to happen or something like there was this yeah. expectation and that you were going to find it. You're going to, yeah, when I have my soulmate, when, sure. and I, when I, yeah, reach my <laughs> X number of dollars and, you know, then I'll be successful when, then, then I can celebrate. Right. Yeah. So there's that, um, uh, just it's delayed gratification is what I think I was always taught yeah. is that you can work towards something. And then you, the problem is, is you never get there. And so you never get the celebration. You never get to finish the finish line because then there's another you know, goal or whatever aspiration put in front of you or me, I'll use myself as an example. So I'm just laughing because I'm like, so much of my life has been driven by expectations and how I get so disappointed in myself, in others, because they don't live up to like, didn't you guys get the lines I sent you <laughs> to play in the, my play the way it's supposed to go? I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah like come on come on people you're not you're not following along with the storyline here yeah um i richard says the 42nd shadow is actually one of the shadows at the source of all human mental fear and that is because the shadow concerns death i think it kind of ties in with um like oh my gosh, I don't have enough time to do all the things that I'm doing. And, you know, okay, I'm aging. Not, yeah. It, yeah, I'm aging. If I'm not doing it by now, like, 
So if I make if I make this path, it's the wrong direction, and then I'll have closed this off, and I'll die without ever experiencing that. I mean, whether underneath it all, I mean, we used to do this exercise in coaching when I was one of my early coaching things, where you ask somebody, "So what? What are you afraid of?" And they go, "Well, I'm afraid people won't like me for this." And what what is that? And if you're afraid of that, what does that mean? Well, I'm afraid that I won't be loved. Okay, and what's underneath that? And it always boils down to if you keep going. I'm afraid dying. of dying alone or dying or whatever. There's somehow it gets to that. And it's like, most of us don't realize that that ridiculous thing up. I mean, now it feels ridiculous to be afraid of that. When you get down, you're like, Oh, Oh, this is big. No yeah. wonder I'm so afraid of the change. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And the programming partner uh, to this one, I know pretty well, cause it's the 32nd, which is the fear of failure. And then it's preservation, like really understanding what you want to keep. And then, uh, of course, the acidic state is veneration, but it's, it's that <clears throat> fearing of, of failing and, and dying and not being fulfilled or whatever it could be. Um, but what I love about this um, this key, you know, it, he calls it the expectation station. You know, there's this... Um, we, there's some kind of entanglement that's, that's with your desires in your mind, but it's not maybe what is at the root of what you really truly want. Right. We have a story of something, right. And it's, it tends to be so, um, like superficial by the time you get underneath to what I really, truly, what really is my thing. And, and I don't know how many of us finally figure that out until, well, for me, it was coaching, having a really intuitive coach that was like, really? And why is it that you want that? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then, I mean, by the time we got down to it, I was like blown away. Really? <laughs> That's what I want? So it, it was, and how it kept me by wanting that and not getting that, it kept me reinforcing in the expectation that I can't have that. You know what I mean? It kept right, right. The story. And I was I was sharing with somebody yesterday after listening to the 64, the 64 ways audio about how we will then attract people to us to help reinforce those stories. Right. And I'm like, whoa. So, so then when we get to a place where we start operating from the gift, which we're going to get into, then we can start attracting the people into our lives that to support us in that so that we can move out of that expectation mode into more of the gift of detachment Detach- just be- <clears throat> detachment just before we go there i'm i'm going to just mention the repressive oh, and the yes, reactive please. nature yes so being in the repressive state of expectation is grasping he calls it it's deeply rooted in the fear of change mm. <clears throat> So we all know that everything must come to an end in order for something else to be born. So, but when we don't embrace change and we allow things and allow things to die, he says, and decay naturally, we prevent life from renewing itself, thus sapping our healthy energy right out of us. So you're grasping and um, holding on to things. The reactive nature of this key is called flaky. (laughs) It finds itself unable to complete anything in life. It's just kind of just all over the place. Um, Or scattered. Yeah. And then you're not really committed to anything because then you can't fail at it. Right. You can't. (laughs) Right. And so they start something else before they finish a, you know, the cycle of something. And then they get to complete that expectation that I don't deserve what I really want. You know, I can't. Yeah. So, I mean, I love how we create that to to keep that story alive in our system, in our um, awareness. Yeah. Ourselves. Uh, It's such a, it's such a cycle, but thank you for having it. You know, like we can just thank ourselves. That's just amazing because out of that, we can learn to trust life a little bit more. And that's really kind of where this detachment happens. 
And I, uh, Richard talks about, you know, this is a very Buddhic state. Um, it's recognizing you are the reader and the writer of your own story. And so how do you want to hang out in this play? <laughs> and when we become the observer, it's easier for us to put space between that desire or that expectation or whatever, and then we can see it for what it is. And I think that's what um, the more work that I've been doing lately about finding space around things, you know, if you take it and you go, oh, look at that, there's right. that expectation. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and there's the um, disappointment that goes along that I had that expectation. And there's the sadness that goes along. I mean, so we get to like observe all of it because it's not just going to be an expectation that has to go away. Right. There's a lot of emotional stuff tied into it. So can we, with compassion, make space to hold that? Yeah. We're such complex, amazing beings, aren't I we? No, it's so amazing. <laughs> Let's celebrate that. <laughs> oh, oh, do you see my yeah. eclipse shirt? It's very nice. It's the it's the peace and love. Yeah. Um what I love about it is that once you really trust in your own innate abilities and our own innate bodies and our, I mean, connection to mother Gaia and connection to spirit. I mean, it's like you can relax into just relax into that for a moment, relax into detaching from any external shoulds, have tos, expectations around what life should be like at this stage of your life and embrace where you are. Yeah. And if we could get out of the movie, you know, the story that's playing and step literally step back from it. And I, um, the more I do that and the more aware I am of how many of those well written stories I have created, I mean, they're really brilliant. I should probably write them and sell them, but you know, but what, how do we, how do we hang out more in detachment? And then I want to know your thoughts on going from detachment to celebration, because that feels like a huge leap for me. Well, I've been there several times in my life. I can say that for sure. When well, if I thought I, the pathway, I mean, I've been in celebration, Yeah, but no, I don't but look at it as going from letting go of expectations. No, it's celebrating true life because life is never ending. It's the never ending story, right? I mean, as a, as a mystic or as a person who recognizes that death is an illusion and that we're completely connected to source, to um, our loved ones, to people who have passed on to the sages of ages ago. That's where we can celebrate because we're all in this together anyways. Right. And I, I don't know, but can you go from feeling the expectation to into celebration or do you have to go through the gift? No, I think it is a, a re related to the gift. I know that on my journey, as I released trying to get somewhere, be present in my humanness, yet connected to the stars and grounded on the planet. Then I started looking around because I kept hearing my, my best friend come through, go smell the flowers eat the delicious food. I'm not there. So you do it. See your life in new eyes. Enjoy the love and luxuriate in the human being in this body, getting to experience everything that it gets to experience while you're there. I can do that when things are good. Mm. So here's the thing. So here yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. It's two days past eclipse. 
And there's a lot of rumblings going on. I mean, that eclipse brought in a lot of change, a lot of transformation happening. And you can feel the, the jangliness, I think um, Lee Harris called it. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. And sometimes I'm in this euphoric state. And then for a few hours, I'll be oh. in. Oh, yeah. I was driving on the highway and I was like, man, whoo, I'm feeling all kinds of stuff going on. Well, and, and, and the, can I be, but this is the thing, celebrating being angry and mm -hmm. feeling the intensity. And like, I woke up a couple of times in the middle of the night and my hands were clenched. And I was like, whoa. Oh. So I am not, I am practicing learning how to celebrate anger, learning how to celebrate agitation learning how to celebrate ugliness, learning how to celebrate, oh man, something, some big fire happened last night, several alarm um, fire trucks and I could smell the mm. smoke coming in through the um, open windows. And I was like, oh, you know, I mean, there's so much devastation and that's not even including the wars on the planet. I mean, we have, so it's like, I get, I feel that and then my biggest thing is to breathe. I can still breathe. Right. I'm able to breathe and stop. And when I can breathe, all, my test is when I can breathe all the way down into my belly, then I know that I'm fully present because how often do we breathe just to here? And so we need to send it when we can get all the way down and, um, you know, do that um, flexible spine thing that Richard Rudd does during the incantation of solace. And, and it's funny because it's a huge part of the pearl, the spine. We will get into that more. But it, it's so fun for to go, okay, I can still breathe. I can celebrate that. I'm not so sure I'm celebrating all of the ugliness on the planet and my fear and my anger and all of that. Well, I mean, when, hmm, how can I put this? I mean, you know what I mean? It's, I mean, it's a cosmic joke, the whole thing. And, and Richard talks about this being the punchline when you realize 42. I know the life. The I love yeah. the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Right. He brought that yes. reference. And this up. is Gene Key 42. I know. Is, I just, like, I, that just made me crackle up. So, I mean, I just, so. To, it, to not be so serious about life. Yes, there are lots of things happening, but is it happening to you in this now moment? Well, and even if it's not happening to me, even the stuff that's happening to me, can I celebrate the breath that I can take in this moment? Can I celebrate that I know what I'm learning is that it's not going to last. Right. And until I just stop trying to make it not be right. anger, sadness, grief, physical ailment, whatever. I mean, it's like pain, right? When you have pain, you physically just need to, you, all you can do sometimes is just breathe into it. Right. And you're so good at this. I think this is, um, I don't know how it must be related let me see. It's got to be related somehow. To what? Acceptance. Oh, it is. I think that's one of the um, ring, uh, code on ring. It's it's not, but it feels like it must be because you are then relinquishing that feeling of needing to change anything. Um, and it's really about trusting. Yeah. This is, it, it's like, just trust that life has you. And that's, that is something that for some reason came to me really late in life. I hope a lot of our listeners get it earlier than me, <laughs> but I mean, when you can sit to the place where you, um, oh, we used to do this in magic school where you'd feel into your essence, like feel into the part of you that is beyond this yeah. physical time space thing, but it's your universal ethereal connected to everything self. When you're there and you're in that beautiful space, you're in this, what we used to call, we're floating in essence. Yeah. 
And so I love that feeling. But then what we do is when you're floating literally on water and you go, am I floating? Am I floating? <laughs> you take yourself right out of it. <laughs> you know, it's like, ah. Oh. So, so it's that continued. And so what I'm learning, and this is another celebration, I suppose, is that I can get back. It doesn't mean that I don't ever get to go do it again. But, you know, I think I used to think, oh, I failed. I'm done. Oh, that's why it's the programming partner. So, so it's like, oh, I did. I failed. Ha, I'm going to try again. Okay. That's funny. <laughs> so, so where I want to play with you and thank you for helping me laugh because it's helping to shift this whatever's going on with me right now is um, let's do the mudra. Are you up for that? Yeah. So you take your fingers and you take your ring finger and you put it down towards the center of your palm and you wrap your thumb onto it really tightly to keep it folded down there. And your other three fingers are going up. And the way that Richard talked about it, he kind of had it moving. He said, allow yourself to feel the warmth, not heat, but the warmth from your belly. And then what you do is you allow yourself to feel your warmth and connect it to the warmth of others. Mm. So we're celebrating ourselves and our life, if you will, our life force coursing through us. And we're celebrating our connectedness to the other life force out there. Yay. And I love that. I mean, I, I love the story of how he weaves this so beautifully. I'm like, that's the whole line right there of the city <laughs> for me. Yeah, so, yeah. It's And this is all taking place in our sacral plexus. So that's our creative center. And that, I really do love that key because it's kind of like. So that's is. interesting because we're actually creating the celebration experience. Because we are at choice in that moment versus being victim where I can't possibly create. I think that's key. I didn't realize that it was in the solar plex, the um, yeah. sacral. 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 Yeah. So yeah, so that makes a huge difference where I feel like. That's in your cauldron. Yeah. And that's where I can cook it up and be able to go. I can have a sip of that celebration right now when I forget. Yeah, babe. <laughs> Don't take it too seriously. For me, sometimes I need to connect my hands to get like the energy flow, like through through my whole system. It's yeah. like uh, it's like uh, connecting like the infinity loop, you know. Yeah. Thank you, sweetie. That was you are so welcome. Don't think it does. Talk about a shift in the last 20 minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> and that's, and oh, and one of the things that I, I listen to, I love um, listening to different um, intuitives and people uh, sharing their gifts online. And I was listening to Lee Harris and um, talk about April. He's actually going to have Richard Rudd on. In his oh. this this month, which I thought was pretty cool, pretty cool, because I mean that's a two beautiful worlds to blend together. Anyway, he was saying about the difficultness of this time, and that we started hitting some rough waters in March, and they're going to continue, but they are going to even out a little bit more towards the third week in April. What I appreciated about this was where he brought in community. This is where you search out, you nourish, you, you know, fall into, you love on your community. Um, you find those spaces that can hold you like you just did for me in this last 30 minutes. And then, and then, and we do it for each other. Right. So we're not here to do this traveling through this craziness alone. And I think very often we think we're the only ones feeling what we're feeling. And it's just not true. Um, I think there's a lot going on on the planet, all different flavors and sizes and shapes, of course. But 
when you find somebody that can say, you know what, I've got you, go ahead, fall apart, feel it all. And I'm here to remind you who you are so you can put yourself back together because I trust that you will. And that is something that I'm not looking for somebody to put me back together. I'm not looking for somebody to tell me that it's going to be okay. Just, you know, be okay with it. I'm like, no, I need to fall apart now. <laughs> let me just let me fall apart. And then that's when I'm like, oh, Humpty Dumpty put himself back together again, you know? So anyway, for witnessing each other is what we need. And that community uh, is a support system that I had no idea. And, and the other thing that he said is to feel into where's your resistance to community. Mm. What, where have you become isolationist and pulled away and what, and how, how do you want to be with that? Do you want, how does that, how is that serving you? How can you take baby steps and go into safer communities and just kind of put your toe in the water. You don't have to like dive in, but you know, and that's. I, I think that it's normal and it's human for us to isolate. I know that it's when I've felt hurt and I, um, I'm feeling a lot of pain. It's kind of like you go into your cave and lick your wounds or, you know, whatever symbology you want to use, but you, you're in that space to kind of take time to heal. But I have found it very useful to be either listening or even participating in smirk circles, small circles, um, to move through some of this denser energy. So, yeah, and it's good to, to actually get out of this ecosystem sometimes and, and move into a bigger one where it's like, oh, this is really tiny compared to what else is going on. So yeah. that's part of it also. And the other thing that I thought was so beautiful is if it's safe, for, I think what happened during COVID is we did do a lot of pullback in, which was in, actually necessary in some ways for us to kind of start the contemplative reflective practices that now, because we've opened up that can of worms, we can't go back. So we're in the process of healing from all of that. And how do we, how do we learn more about that is by being with others, with like-minded others. Yeah. So, well, cheers. That was- Cheers to that. And do you have any other words of wisdom or a card or something that you want to draw today? Have you thought about how to close? I have not. Well, let's do something celebratory. So what would be fun for you? Well, actually, I found these cards. I, I, I don't know. Anything you always about have these. cards. But these are, I don't know. These, these don't belong in some pack. I just, they were on my desk. I think I got them rando. I'm just going to pull a random one just because okay. it's fun to not know what the heck is going on. Well, and then can we still celebrate it even when we don't know? Um, this one says, if good comes into my life and I deny it by saying, I don't believe it, I literally push my good away. Oh, man. So talk about celebration. If there's yeah. folks out there that are having trouble believing it, it's your story. It's your hero or heroine's journey. Em embrace all of it and yeah. detach from any specific outcome of what life is supposed to look like. Oh, that's good. That's beautiful. Well, darling, thank you. Thank you for being you. And um, just a quick, if you're interested at all in learning anything more about the School of Light Collective, um, visit our Facebook or Instagram pages or uh, our website, schooloflightcollective.com. So we look forward to um, being with you next time.